The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The power of words. Words are not merely sounds produced by the air passing through our larynx and shaped by our mouths. They possess real and significant power. God demonstrated this when He spoke the world into existence through the power of His words, as noted in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. As beings created in God's image, our words too carry weight and influence. While it is important to clarify that human words do not have the divine power to create reality in the same way God's words do, they nonetheless have a profound impact on the world around us. Our words do more than just convey information. They affect the emotions, thoughts, and actions of others. The power of our words can be immense, capable of uplifting or destroying a person's spirit. Consider the negative impact words can have. Harsh or careless words can stir up hatred and violence, exacerbating existing wounds and inflicting new ones. A single cruel remark can leave lasting scars on someone's heart, leading to feelings of worthlessness or deep emotional pain. Words can spread lies, create misunderstandings, and foster divisions among people, driving wedges between friends, family members, and even entire communities. On the other hand, words also have the power to heal, encourage, and bring joy. A kind word at the right moment can lift someone's spirit, offering comfort and hope in times of distress. Encouraging words can inspire individuals to overcome challenges and achieve their goals. Words of love and affirmation can build strong, positive relationships and create a sense of belonging and acceptance. There are two ends of the spectrum when it comes to beliefs about the power of words. On one end, there are Christians who believe they can speak things into existence, adhering to the name it and claim it, or decree and declare theology. Some of these Christians subscribe to the little God theology, which is incorrect. God is God alone. We have never been God, we are not God now, and we never will be God. On the other end of the spectrum, there are Christians who believe that words carry no weight at all. This perspective is just as unscriptural as the little God's theology. Both extremes fail to capture the biblical understanding of the power of words. I want to provide a biblical perspective on the significance of words, emphasizing that our words carry weight in the eyes of the Lord and according to scripture. The biblical proverb, death and life are in the power of the tongue, appropriately captures the dual nature of our speech. Our words can be instruments of life, promoting peace, understanding, and kindness, or they can be tools of destruction, spreading discord, hatred, and pain. The words you speak matter. Do not be misled by doctrines that attempt to downplay the power of your words. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. This principle is repeatedly emphasized in the Word of God, highlighting the significant impact of our speech. Are you careful and thoughtful about the words you use, or do you speak impulsively without thinking? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The Bible warns us that you will give account. Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. In Matthew 12, Jesus addresses a group of Pharisees who have just accused him of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Essentially, these Pharisees were accusing Jesus of being demon-possessed. It is important to note Jesus' warning to them, a warning that applies to us as well. Jesus warns the Pharisees of the coming judgment, a reality we often forget. There is a day of judgment approaching for all of us. I mention this not to instill fear or anxiety, but to encourage you to prepare for it. We should live our lives with the awareness that one day, we will stand before an almighty God and give an account of how we have lived. Judgment Day is real and it is coming. Each of us will have to stand before the Lord, accounting for our lives, our decisions, our actions, and our words. This is a sobering reality that should instill a healthy fear of God in our hearts. God is not a figure like Father Christmas or an old, gentle grandfather. 
He is a consuming fire, a being of immense power and holiness. In our natural state, encountering him would be overwhelming, even destructive. We must fear him with reverence and awe. Let this fear of God grow in your life, guiding you to live righteously and with purpose. Remember, Judgment Day is coming, and we must all be ready to stand before the Lord and account for our lives. Luke chapter 12, verse 4 to 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Judgment day is real for all of us, and it is coming. Jesus warned the Pharisees about this, and we must heed this warning as well. Judgment day is approaching. Do not live your life carelessly. Never forget that a day of judgment is coming. In Matthew 12, Jesus also warns that on this judgment day, we will have to give an account for every idle word we have spoken. This indicates that there is a record of everything we say. Somewhere in heaven, there is a logbook of every word we have ever uttered, whether in anger or frustration. We may not understand how God records our words, whether through some heavenly technology unknown to us or by a recording angel, but it is clear that every word is noted. Consider the implications of this. Are you comfortable knowing that on Judgment Day, your words will be reviewed? What have you been saying to the people around you? What have you said to your friends and family members, your spouse, or your children? Choose your words wisely, knowing that they carry weight and will be accounted for. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You can kill your marriage with words. One sentence can plant a seed of doubt that will destroy the foundations of your relationship. I remember watching a video of a daytime chat show featuring a married couple there for a paternity test. During an argument, the wife had told her husband that the children were not his. She may have won the argument, but in the process, she destroyed her own marriage with her words. When the paternity results confirmed that the children were indeed his, the damage had already been done. The seed of doubt planted by her words likely left the man questioning her fidelity. This woman destroyed her marriage with words, all for the sake of winning an argument and expressing her anger. In her desire to win, she inflicted irreversible damage on her relationship. If I may share a personal confession about the power of words in my own marriage, my wife remembers every unkind thing I have ever said. She can recall the exact day, time, and even what I was wearing, details I have long forgotten. Yet, she remembers them years later. You and I will have to give an account for our words, so why do we live as if we won't? Words have power. They can destroy a child's dreams before they even try. To lie, to bear false witness, to spread gossip. All these sins require words. Words have the power to wound deeply and to lift up. To worship God, we use words. To praise God, we use words. The power of words is immense and often underestimated. In the creation narrative, God did not create the world with his thoughts or his hands. Instead, we repeatedly see the phrase in the book of Genesis, God said, with these words, God brought the world into existence. This demonstrates the immense power of words. In courtrooms, when people testify under oath and lawyers battle over the futures of individuals, what do they use? They use words. In states with a death penalty, life and death can be decided by words. The power of words is profound and not fully appreciated. I believe there is a spiritual element to the power of words that we, as human beings, do not fully comprehend. Words can shape realities, influence decisions, and alter the course of lives. We must recognize and respect the power of our words, using them wisely and thoughtfully. There is a power in words that is undeniable. There is a power in words that even the world acknowledges. Have you not heard world speak of positive affirmation? There is a power in words. Why else would God make it so that by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned? Words reveal the condition of a person's heart. Luke 6.45 The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil treasure of his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. There is no better judge of a person's heart than the words he allows to come forth from his mouth. There is a clear theme in the Bible, and that is that your words matter. Time and time again in the Bible, we are told about how we should use this gift of the tongue we have been given. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. This is what the life of every Christian must be like. They must be able to speak good words to people 
they must be able to exalt one another with good words and not tear each other down. Psalm chapter 71 verse 8, let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 to 20, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't listen to anyone who tells you words don't matter. They do. They may not matter to you, but to God, your words matter. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.